It's prime rib. It's the best of the best. The creme de la creme, the Michael Jordan of basketball, but it can be tricky to make and it's expensive. So we wanna make sure we get it right. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. We do need to start with some prep though. Sound good? Let's cook. We've got some fresh thyme sprigs here. What we need to do is remove the leaves from the stems. Now I know normally I say use those stems because there's so much flavor in them. However, we're gonna add everything to a food processor to help streamline the process. But don't worry, I'll give you an option if you don't have a food processor. So again, just remove all of the leaves from the stems. We are gonna do the exact same thing with fresh rosemary. Now, if you don't have fresh thyme or rosemary, you can substitute in for dry herbs. Now add everything right to a food processor. In addition to those herbs, we're gonna add in some garlic cloves and then followed up with a peeled whole shallot. Now take your food processor, obviously, over to the base of it. And what we wanna do is add on the top and begin to pulse it what this is going to do is start to finely mince up our herbs. Now to help them move a little bit more, what we want to do is just slowly pour in just a little bit of olive oil. Again, we just want the herbs to begin to move. At this point, what I want to do is make a really delicious herb compound butter. So I'm going to add in a few chunks of butter at a time, get it mixing and processing into our herbs and olive oil so that it becomes this delicious compound butter. After it is mixed in, you know me, I like to season every single stage. So season this with a little bit of sea salt and then some fresh cracked black pepper. Put the lid back on, give it a few more pulses on high speed and then set it to the side at room temperature. Really quickly to give you another option when making this, if you don't have a food processor, no problem. You can finely mince up the herbs and then whisk it into the butter. Make sure it is room temperature so that it whisks together very easily. Or you can add everything to a stand mixer, of course, after you mince those herbs and mix it together that way. Either way is totally fine. We just want to make sure we get to this final product. Here's what we do now. I've got a behemoth 10 pound four bone in standing ribeye roast better known as the prime rib. You get this from the meat department at a grocery store or from a favorite local butcher shop. You can even ask them to trust it, although I will show you how to do that here. First though, an option and completely optional is, I wanna expose all these bones. It's a process known as Frenched. I just think it looks nicer. I don't know, it's just me. Maybe it's the culinary person in me. So remove it from the platter, add it to the cutting board using a very sharp bony knife. What we wanna do is just cut back on that little chunk of meat at the top. Yes, you'll lose a little bit of meat, but it's okay, I'd rather have the bones. And then scrape it completely off. Now, stand your ribeye roast up and then go right in between each bone cutting down and over to remove that little chunk of skin and of meat. I actually saved these for stock just as a little FYI. Now, the worst part of this process is actually scraping each bone at the top just to fully expose it with no meat on there. It can take maybe 10 to 15 minutes to do so. I'm kind of used to doing this as I used to do this very process all the time back in my restaurant days. But you can see how nice that it looks. Now, at this point, we want to truss everything. Now, it's going to be a little bit different than my beef tenderloin recipe where we go over and around because there's bones in the way. So what I like to do is tie a good first knot, a Swiss knot, so it's kind of like a double knot, and then tie one more really firm knot. Go all the way down your rib roast right in between the bones and then come back and cut off any excess butcher's twine just like this. Now let's take it and put it in a very large roasting pan like this. Now, I can't say this enough. Meat loves salt and pepper. So you need to generously season this prime rib roast on all sides with salt and pepper. Pack it in with your other hand if you have to, just like I'm doing, but be sure to move it around and get it on all sides. 
Now to pack in all that seasoning, we are gonna grab our compound butter and we wanna spread it all over the top. The top of this prime rib is known as the cap in the industry. So we wanna completely cover the cap in our herb compound butter, just like this. You can use your hands too if you want, totally up to you. It spreads pretty nice with a rubber spatula. Okay, looks fantastic. Now, we are going over to the oven. We're gonna roast it at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. We wanna start that browning process, sort of accelerate it so that it gets that nice brown just to start. Just to have a look, just to show you right now. This looks absolutely fantastic. We are right on target. Put it back in the oven. We are going at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to take about 90 minutes or 12 to 14 minutes per pound to get that medium rare medium internal temperature. So while I have a few minutes, I wanna explain why prime rib is so tricky. One, it can turn from medium rare to medium well in a matter of minutes. And that can happen even when you're resting. So you have to pay such close attention. That's why I like to keep it at lower temperatures around 325 degrees Fahrenheit so it can more slow cook and I can be ready for any jump. Think about if you're 375, 400, oh my gosh, before you know it, boom, it's turned. Then you've got well done prime ribbon. No one's, they're just, they're not gonna eat it. It's no good. The other thing is when you cut into prime rib after it's done resting, oftentimes, oh my gosh, it looks so overcooked. That is not the case. Let it rest, let it breathe for another minute or two and boom, you will see all of that beautiful pink and red come right out. It's not like a steak that's grilled or pan seared. You cook it medium rare, you slice it, boom, you see it right there. This is slow cooked. The proteins have broken down much slower. It just takes a second for you to see it. So do not freak out if you slice into it and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is great. Okay, a few more minutes and then we're gonna make this amazing horseradish sauce. So let's make that sauce. I've got a bowl full of creme fraiche. I've got a great recipe on my website that you can check out. If you don't have creme fraiche, you could use sour cream here, no problem. We're gonna add in a little bit of mayonnaise to help stabilize it, make it a little bit thicker. Now I've got some raw prepared horseradish. This is not the same as creamy horseradish. This raw prepared you get in the refrigerated food section of the grocery store. Next, a little bit of stone ground mustard or Dijon. We're gonna hit it with some Worcestershire sauce and then a little bit of vinegar to help cut some of that heat from the horseradish and mustard. Then just grab some salt and pepper, season it up really quickly. And then using a whisk, whisk it until it is completely combined and mixed in. And then we're simply going to set it to the side until we need it. Okay, bonus for you, my friends. I've got about two pounds of these little baby assorted colored potatoes. You could also use fingerling potatoes if you want. We are gonna coat them quickly in some olive oil and season them up with salt and pepper. I just figured this would be a nice quick addition at the end to our prime rib roast. Now you can toss them around with your hands or a spoon or a spatula or mix them in the bowl just by tossing that bowl, totally up to you. Once they are coated and everything, let's go pull out our prime rib roast. We've got about 45 minutes left in the cooking process, which is plenty of time for these potatoes to cook. So just add them all around the outside of that rib roast in the pan. Going back to the oven again for another 45 minutes and at that time, Boom, our prime rib is done, our potatoes are done. Amazing. We are gonna let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. Let all those juices soak back into that meat. Remember, meat should never be smoking from steam when you slice into it. So after that amount of time, we're gonna transfer it right to our cutting board. It looks and smells amazing, you guys. Seriously, this is where it's at. Take a nice big slice right out of this prime rib and do your best not to eat it. We got a few more things. You can always reheat it, but you cannot take back when it's overcooked. And this is way too much of an expensive piece of meat to be messing around. That's why you pull it at 110 degrees Fahrenheit internally, get a good thermometer. Once it rests in that foil for a good 15 minutes, you're gonna be at that 125, 130 range, that beautiful medium rare medium. And also see what happens after I sliced it. It didn't look beautifully pink like you would think. And then what happens two minutes later, you get that wonderful pink, red, medium rare, medium internal temperature. It's absolutely perfect, fantastic. Here are just a few more beauty shots. 
Of course, don't forget to serve this up with the potatoes and horseradish cream that we made. And if you love this video and learn something, please like and share it. Smash that subscribe button and definitely check out this video right here. I made it for you. We'll see you on there. Let's definitely get in some of this.